So we're here at the Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, because Trump is in town. And also, we're kind of here, in, kind of like in restaurants. You see the White Walkers are converging, right? The socialist zombie horde is here. So as a night watchman of Richmond, right, wardens of River City, we're going to have to go check it out and see that uh, things don't go out of hand and to kind of assess and document the situation. So you guys ready for this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're all going to die. <laughs> So here at the Coliseum, I agree with the sentiment, with the message. Uh, fuck Trump and uh, a lot of the stuff that he stands for, right? Um, and what are your thoughts on Trump yourself? You know, I really think that uh, a lot of people are buying into what he's saying. Um, in the end, I feel it's not going to be any different than any other politician. Uh, people like to think that he's some independent guy when really he has a lot of strong political ties dating back to, you know, when he was in business. Um, buying off politicians, paying for access. I think it's just going to be more of the same. I don't think it's going to be anything different, um, except he's tapping into a segment of the population that a lot of people, how can I say this, uh, thinks is American when it really has a lot of racist undertones and uh, bigotry. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really pretty much his whole thing. Right, right. Yeah, I, I see it more as a, a bread and circus show at this point. Right, right? exactly. Uh, I mean, like you were mentioning earlier, it's like, it turns like, it sounds like every other kind of politician out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? No, no but right, I've you, heard... You guys have to. It's, yes, it's I've like, heard it's pretty much, this is the, the real life yeah, <laughs> version of it. And it really is just hard to believe, you know, when you watch what he says and, you know, you look at his speeches that he's really not saying anything. Right. Um, you know, most recently going after that judge because of his heritage, saying they would be unbiased. I mean, or they would be biased. It's, you know, it's pretty disgusting. And, um, yeah, I don't think he would do anything really better or worse for this country than people who have been, other than, uh, you know, creating a bigger social divide than there already is. Right. Uh, what do you think about... So we've been, we see time and time again all of these empty promises from politicians, right? Mm -hmm. Obama, empty promises for him too. Right. Like the beginning, he was like, I'm going to close uh, Git Bay. Never happened, right? No. Yeah. Uh, the wars are going to end. More wars continue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I see then, after being tricked so many times, why don't we do option C? None of the above. That's what I was, that's, I saw someone right. with nobody 16. Nobody 16. And that is exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking. But I, I honestly don't know who. I don't even know who to vote for. I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, look, I think we're done with this, thinking that yeah. politicians are our saviors. Right. They're going to come here and fix these problems, mm -hmm. uh, fix the mess here, yeah. when they only continue to make it worse and worse right. and worse. Right. And I mean, uh, what was Obama's slogan in 2008? It was hope and change. Hope and change, and yeah. And what's happened? <laughs> and I mean, where are we now? Right. And now here comes Donald Trump. I mean, a more extreme message of right, that. Right, right. But make America I mean, great again. Yeah, it's the I don't same remember thing. the last time it was ever great. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I think we're kind of done with, with the, the messages. We're kind of done. I, I would say I'm done with politicians telling oh, me about these big stuff. So me, I'm, I'm not going to vote anyone. Yeah, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm considering too. Right. I mean, how many times do we have to go through this before we realize that they're all the same? Right. It's like yeah. that Charlie Brown where like he's holding the football. Well, it, like, this time, this is it. Trust happen. me, this is yeah. it. It's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> really, nothing's going to change until you get money out of politics. And that's never going to happen because the people who make the laws are people that benefit from having money in the politics. Right. So it's pretty much just a vicious circle. Right. So I will think, for me, I'm done with politicians. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm done with government. I'm done with politics. I want to focus our attention into our own community, mm -hmm. right, and build ourselves up, yeah. right, away from these empty promises and politicians that just continue to, to rob us and destroy us and lie to us 
and mislead us, right? Yeah. All the time, all the time. The yeah. Square Stadium, uh, the football training field, was going to cost $3 million. It turns out like $9 million, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, you look at, well, the bicycle race is going to bring a lot of money. It's like yep. ghost towns out there, right? Yep. So just, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it all. I'm, I'm yep. tired of all. <laughs> So that's, uh, I guess, what my prediction. It's good to share that the six mentality of that because I think yeah. it is time for change, but in a different direction. Right. Aside from all of this, aside from the empty promises that Bernie or, or Hillary or Trump or anyone else has yeah. to go there. Yep. What does he say? You know who? Yes. Yes. A Baltimore writer. Democracy is the pathetic belief in the collective wisdom of individual ignorance. I agree. <laughs> you know, he has a library in Baltimore. Opens only one time a year. Uh, and I'd love to check it out. I need to check it out. Um, but yeah, th thanks for, for coming up. But that's, that's, that's my prediction. I think that it's time for real change, a different direction that we've never done before. Yeah. And not compromise our principles for politics. Exactly. Right. So, uh, yeah, thanks for, for coming up, yeah, buddy. Keep it up. Keep it up, man. <laughs> I, have, I have one Who's this solution. Guy? for the inequality in wage rates. Real simple, and we can do it fairly quickly, right? Unions. The women that work next to me in the union that I belong to make exactly the same thing that I make. They get exactly the same benefits I get. They have the same representation in the union by union representatives as I do. There's no inequality. Well, you would say unions, though, would have to be voluntary, though, right? Because there's a oh. lot of unions yeah, that... Yeah. Uh, that people who try to go in there and they kind of um, kind of push you, right? And in a way, kind of intimidate you into signing up, right? It would have to be voluntary. You can't say that if I'm going to work here, I have to give up my money for this union, right? Okay, now see, this is where people get up, get it kind of, gets kind of lost in that, okay? I'm not asking, it would have to be voluntary, right? Right, voluntary, right? right? voluntary, okay, voluntary. is fine. Yeah. Because that's what I did. I voluntarily did it. I voluntarily signed up Right, went to school, they paid for school for me, right, and in a contract that I signed was, being as they paid for my five years of school, that I have to not compete with them for five years. I can either join up with them and work and get the benefits that I had went to school for and use that knowledge to bring up the union, or I can choose not to. What union were you part of? The IBEW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Electrical work? Yes. Okay. All right. And I was able to then decide without pressure from anyone, right, to either continue with the union and work at a higher wage rate, better benefits, representation when I needed, where the corporate hierarchy wouldn't be getting all of my money. Sir, sure. let me ask you, what about those that still want to compete in the same field, but want to, want to trade their services and labor at a lower rate. Uh, was that permissible in your union? Well, no, because you end up working for a contract. Yeah, I mean, it's a contract between me, well, if I were in that field, and I see someone who wants to trade for those services, I should be able to contract for whatever rate I want to do, right, outside of uh, other people's influence. He is a complex thinker. Now, see, I understand what you're saying. Yes. All right, but like anywhere else, if you go home to a, to Kmart, let's just say, yeah. and you fill out an application, okay, and they say they're gonna pay you 10 cents above minimum wage, right, and you go ahead and you do that, right, and the person next to you go into the, comes in, fills out an application, and the person likes them better because maybe they associate with them better. They have a similar look, let's say, right? And they say, well, I'm gonna give you $9 an hour instead of $7.35. Sure. Right? That would not be equal. What do you mean that's not equal? That's not equal because you came in before I did, right? And he gave you 10 cents above minimum wage, yet he's gonna give me $3 above minimum wage. And we started exactly the same time and we're doing the same job. So if you're at a yard sale, right, and someone wants to buy a product from you, right, like a, a bicycle, and you say, you know what, you look like you use it, I'll give you two for five bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Someone comes in and says, um, it's like, for you, I'll sell it for $10, right? right. Are you going to, do you feel like you have to now sell it 
that bicycle to five dollars to him, your own property? Well, me personally, yeah. because of the values I have, once I say what I'm gonna do, regardless of what no, comes after that, is, if I say I'm gonna give it to you for five dollars, and he says I'll take it for ten, yeah. I'm gonna give it to you for five dollars because I've already agreed with right, you. So to that's, give so it that's to you for me, right? Right. And then you have another right. extra bicycle, right? And he still wants it for ten dollars. So you'll give it to him for ten dollars, right? Right. All right. I mean, so that's what, what difference is it then? Right, and when you have your own business, because these are your property, right? A business is pretty much an extension of your own home, right? right? Uh, in, in which you allow guest people to come in as guests, and you can trade and contract and whatever negotiated price that you want it to be, right? So, in, in the way that if I'm an employee or someone wants to come in and trade work, uh, the, the, the way that the employer and I contract and talk about it has to be separate from everyone else. Has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with him. Or it has nothing to do okay. with me. Right? It's, it's voluntary. It's consensual. But how does that how does that benefit you? This is, okay. This is a world class discussion. We right. Both <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to yeah, do. Yeah. Cause see, that's what yeah. that's how we solve things. We talk. Right, right, we right, discuss. Right. We come to an agreement. And like that's you're what talking about government does. Like you mentioned, you, you talk about minimum right. wage. Now, I want a living wage, and the culprit that is preventing you from having a living wage is not McDonald's. Uh, it's not Kmart, it's not Walmart, it's government. When you get your paycheck, nearly half your income, like how much of the income is there, does it say a McDonald's tax? It's government tax. I all just want to know, for all, all these years, who was who is fighting? So, so, no, no, so, so I mean, you're, you're talking about, you want a, you want a living wage, right? $7, $9, right? The point is, it's not these businesses then that are robbing you of a living wage. If that's really the justification, trying to say, well, I want more money, great. So do I. I want, I want more of my income of productivity that I create. I don't want that robbed from me. When you look up sales tax, uh, import tax, tariffs and imports, uh, local, city, state, federal, all of that, that stuff adds up. That's nearly half your income that is robbed and stolen from you from government. It's not McDonald's. It's government that prevents you from having a living wage. So I think this union and these things are a form of a band-aid solution, but a distraction from the real focus of the, of the problem that is really preventing you from negotiating, from entering these contracts, from competing. You know, you have to yeah. take it like in other places, you have to have like 300 training hours for people just to wash hair as a barber. Let me ask you, as a stylist, I was going to right? barber school. Yeah, right. and ours hours. is like 800 That discriminates against the poor from competing, from right. coming up in the economic level. It's not Walmart, it's not these businesses. It's well, it's government, government that right. sets the laws for that. Right. Now, here's the thing. Here's a question for you, okay? Oh, I mean, you communicating with me, yeah. I'm a business owner. You by yourself, you're one of my 200 employees. Sure. And you come to me and you say you want more money, right? You, it's hard for you to make it. You want more money. And you come to me by yourself and you know what I'm going to tell you? Nah. You know what I'm going to tell you? No. Because it's just you. That's fine. But That's 200, fine. 200 of my employees, all 200 of them, get together and say, I want more money. We need an extra $3 an hour, right? Am I going to fire all 200 of y'all? No. If it's no. voluntary, because no, 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 I would no, not no, be no. able to. If it's voluntary, if it's voluntary, if it's consensual, if they want to go there together, go for it, right? Right, but uh, there's but the strength is, in numbers. There's strength in numbers. Yeah, but there's also strength in people who would want to do that job at a cheaper rate. And, uh, that, and that's that's and up to them if, to decide if they want right, to do it. Lower if than everyone does it at a cheaper rate, yeah. if you settle for less, yeah. you will always settle for less. Well, no, you, you, can't, you, you, can't tell, you cannot less. judge what another person's needs are when they don't have it's nothing. It's not about needs. If they don't have nothing, We're anything. No, 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 no. You're saying equality no, no, and need is different. No, no, no. You can't say it's equality that you need nine dollars and someone really needs a job and can't compete in the market and they'll do it for seven dollars. You can't chalk that out. Well, I would do it for seven dollars. Why would you do why it, would it you? for seven dollars? Because that's you what you can do. No, it no, for no, nine. no. That's not your business. That's not no, your business. this is my thing. No, 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 no. See, that's the thing. That's the point. That is the point. No, that's not missing. Me, I would do it for seven dollars. I can do this right. Don't shut me out for wanting to do seven dollars worth of work or stop me. From contracting individually with my own labor, right? right? I'm not oppressing myself, right? I'm out of and a job. I have no money. Government robs that for me. You would stop me by trying to go through government and pass minimum wage laws to create more unemployment, to stop me from trading my labor, right? Say again. The railroads. Someone would do it for cheaper. Yeah, I mean, let, let the market uh, cr create the, the competition of people to do There's that. There's always Absolutely. someone that'll do it for cheaper. A lot of, yeah, and these are built. These are great. Right. But there's always someone that'll do it for cheaper. I agree with you. Yeah. All right. Let that, let that occur. Naturally. If you're a business owner, wouldn't you rather pay 
the least amount you could to everybody that's working for you. If I could get away with paying you $3 an hour as a business owner, and I can profit an extra 70, 80,000 just off of you, if I do that, if I can find 50 people that yeah. take $3 an hour, right, because they have to work, you know what the right? Is? then I'm going to be making that much more Actually, money. Actually, not really. You, not really. You don't have a right to profit. The thing is... Why don't when I have a right to profit? Because the thing is, when there's, you don't have a right to other people's money in their wallets and how they spend. Ah. Now, the thing is, when there's market competition... But if I'm not giving you the no, money... No, 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 that doesn't matter. You don't have to. Because when there's if market you're competition... For it, I don't give you when there's you. market competition, you're not the only person out there. This other person wants to retain employees, so there's a medium ground that things come to an equilibrium. And it's like, I can't pay you too much less, otherwise you're going to quit and go work for someone else who's going to pay you a dollar more, right? And it's going to cost you more to retrain, to get you up to speed, to give you the skills in there, right? So there's a medium. You really can't say, I'm going to pay you $3. There's a medium in there, an equilibrium, which you can't pay too high and too low, and otherwise someone else will pay in that price and you'll lose out, and you'll just go bankrupt. All right, now here's a question for you. That's just a bad All marketing right. and business plan. There's a lot of states, right, that are union. A lot of their labor forces and all are strictly union, okay? And those states have real low unemployment late rates. They make higher wages. Uh, the economy tends to do a little bit better because everyone's represented. Um, and the pay is good. Now, if I'm gonna settle for less pay to compete in that market, that's fine. That would be my choice, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop anyone from choosing yeah. that. Okay. Yet, after you do that, right? You can't. When the cost of living rises an extra seventy cents, eighty cents. Why does it rise? Right. For whatever reason, the government chooses to Taxes raise again. the right. cost of living. Yeah, when again. that yeah. does, when that does happen, yeah. and you've settled for less, yeah. right? And you end up in a bad spot because let me tell you, brother, right? It was times not too long ago, during that recession time, where I was homeless. I had two of my boys with me, and I was homeless. We went to a shelter. You know what I'm saying? Through the because of a recession, because of what a government had said. Yeah, my family lost a house to that too. Yeah, so I, I get you to know, understand. So I had a lot of people, families right. and friends, that got affected by that. But the right, problem is that affected. that but was affected by government on lowering that, standards. That was not the market. That was not businesses. That was not if, anyone else outside of that. If now, we band together and we don't allow government to lower the standards, to play with us, uh, to uh, not to increase taxes all the time, to do things just to harm. Right. You your, know, your money is another way that they do that. You can't right. stop that. The only way to stop it, the only way to have real economic freedom, the only way to have real living Barter? wage, no, to abolish that organization that seeks to impoverish you and keep you down and limit your economic oh, freedom, yeah. that is government. They that do is government. that. That's, right. That was their to intent. get rid of these politicians outside of our lives, then that the only jobs that they have is to steal from you as a business to take the productivity and value that you create to sustain their lifestyle of robbing peaceful people. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, that, so, so that's the solution. The thing is, so the we're thing together is, on the government. Right, so Neither so one of us like to go. 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 Right? Right? <laughs> but we just see different ways right now. to get there. But, the, yeah, and so, <laughs> but me, I don't want I don't want to go after uh, putting fingers on a dam because that's going to come down. I want to get rid of the problem once and for all so my future children and the future generations don't have to contend with that when the matrix reboots itself and then we had this moment and chance to just to get rid of it and have real economic freedom in our lifetime. No more taxation, no more theft, no more restrictions on how we can trade with one another, right? Uh, no more laws that discriminate against uh, the impoverished to compete, right? Permits and licenses discriminate against the educated poor. That's right? true. No more monopoly currency, no more fiat currency, right? Real valid, real currency, bitcoins and alternatives. A lot of things that we can do, voluntary and consensual, respect for property rights, respect for self-ownership. Right? And with any time, like, like in, a, in, a, in that kind of market, this is your shirt, that's your body, this is your land, that's your money. Government, on the other hand, says, that's not your land because eminent domain, like Trump has used a lot of times, right? Oh, Government yeah. will say, that's not your house because of property taxes. And many places go, uh, they take your home and put you uh, put a lien on it and bankrupt you if you don't pay your property tax and you're, and you're homeless. That's how government creates essentially, the homeless. Essentially, essentially with government, we never own anything. Right, no, yeah, government owes you. you we are you know, tax we slaves to the government. So, absolutely, you know. absolutely. I, I own feel. Yeah, you know, you won't own your house anymore if you miss a tax right. on a so house. Right. So it's never you been your house. For. Right. So it was never your house. Right. So that's the solution I want to bring about. 
I want real freedom in my lifetime. I don't want pieces of crumbs here and there, right? I don't want to lower some of these uh, restrictions on my life. I want to abolish all the restrictions and finally be free, be able to say, this is my land, this is my house, this is my body, right? Uh, and the only way to do that, though, is to go against the very organization that seeks to continue to oppress you and enslave you, and that is government. It will always be there. And it will always be there if you continue to support it. If you always be there, well, if you compromise your principles for politics. If you continue to I vote say and say a politician's gonna come and save you, that is why it was always gonna be I'll there. I'll say it'll be there, because it started way back when, right? And the Greeks and all decided to make money. The world's been enslaved for a long time. No, no, like no, that. it's not a lot so about money. We're enslaved by the governments then, continuing yeah, and progressing time. on to now. And it's never worked. And their main tool is the money. No, the main tool is people voting. People vote away the principles. It's the illusion that you will achieve freedom through politics. That's how the whole thing is kept alive. For if you continue to think that politics is going to set you free, that's what they want you to do. That's why they want you to participate. That's why they want you to still continue to advocate for government, because they want you to keep up the illusion that the only way to achieve freedom is through Trump, is through Hillary, is through strangers who will dictate and run your life. How about we try something once and for all that no one can tell you how to live your life, no one can tell you how best to run your body, your life, your business, or your money, right? Be then, the old, then let's step forward as a community here, draw that moral line and say it's enough, it is enough, and go forward with a new direction that's never been done before towards that peaceful golden age society that we want. Let's reject and turn our backs towards something that's never worked in all of history. Politics has never set anyone free. Government has never set anyone free. Why keep going through that insanity and hitting our heads against that brick wall over and over again thinking something is going to change finally? Well, well, you know, you said it. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah, it is. Continuously doing something over right. and over again, expecting a different result. Right. You know, we can't get it. We right. won't get it. You so know? why don't we liberate RBA, liberate Richmond from politics, from these corrupt politicians, from government, and finally live together as this peaceful society here as Richmond. Would well, that be something you'd be down and into? Definitely. You know, I've, it's all for peace. You know, I'm like peace, equality, all of those things are something that we can naturally do. Right. You know, but over the past few weeks and months and, you know, throughout my life, I've had different thoughts. Right. And if we're born and one of the first things we learn is how to separate we won't have equality we won't have peace right. we won't have anything because they tell you when you're little match the blocks put all the green ones all the red ones yeah. so we've been taught to separate so the government separates themselves from the regular people of course you know the regular people separate themselves even into smaller That's groups government dividing. the rich yeah. from you know, and the poor and the middle class, everyone separates themselves. If we can't get ourselves together to stop that separation that begins before kindergarten, then we won't be able to get together to change what we need to in the I'm so, Cal. I'm John. Pleasure, nice pleasure. Meet you, man. Let me give you a flyer. Uh, All right. you hold this for a second? Sure. Okay. Here today, report. <laughs> nice. This is uh, the organization we're with, Liberate RBA. And that's kind of the direction we've been, we want to grow and, and, and build towards. We want to build uh, something that's never been done before that actually has respect for property rights, respect for self-ownership, uh, respect for rules that we give explicit consent to, right? Right. Create real contracts and you have your real name on there. And or ANCAP or ANCAP? Uh, you can say free market anarchists. You can say ANCAP. Right. So, huh? That's kind of where I live. There we go. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't live in Richmond. Yeah, yeah, well, we, we do. I'm look at your stuff. Next, I live in Colorado. Next Saturday, we have a Freedom Gathering. Come join us. Meet a lot of the uh, anarchists here as well. We're going to be here for a while. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for. And other cities. We need to talk. We need to talk about it. Yeah, because. I want to start a new YouTube thing, yeah. you know, and it's going to be like my opinions, and I love the debate. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. Here's my card. Give me a call. Yeah, you gave me one. No, well, that's my personal business card. Oh, personal? Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. That'll work. You know, and we might can do some Let's things. Do it, let's and, do it. You know, let's do it. Let's do it. Because I'm going to do it from 40s to zebras, whatever comes up. You know, right, 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 right. Whatever might be in the news. Government. Yeah, let's do it. We can do one, get it started, you know, and I'm just going to try to spread it to everybody. Right. Love all it. different types of opinions. I think we could do
do something fun. Let's, a couple let's, times. let's, let's right. do this. All nice right. cow. <laughs> I'm talking to you, man. Yeah. All right, this is great. So yeah, um, anarchists. Anarchists. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. What do you say? Yeah, I'm moving anchor. Yeah. Where's yeah. property yeah. rights, yeah. voluntary exchange, right? We, uh, can move Who can tell you how better you're moving yourself? Yeah. No one. Only no no one. you. The only higher authority in the world to tell you to dictate that is yeah, yourself. The older I get, the less I like it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so what brings you here to Richmond? Um, I actually work um, across the country at different hospitals. Nice, um, nice. So I've been here since March. <laughs> March, wow, okay, man. We started catching up then earlier. Oh, yeah. uh, the organization we're with is Liberate RBA. Right. Uh, so it's a free market anarchist organization. So yeah, synonymous with uh, narco capitalism, synonymous with volunteerism, agorism. Uh, we launched this in 2012. And uh, yeah, just building that uh, slice of anarchist stand here. So I'm, I'm more of the fact that I would consider myself ultimately an anarchist. Yes. But uh, if we, in the meantime, have to have some sort of government, which I don't think we do, we need more liberties and more freedom. Well, I guess that's... Uh, I don't want control. Right, right. But, all right, so, so that's... Uh, I see what you mean with that. Now, as anarchists, though, right, um, we kind of have to apply that, not just from uh, the philosophy, but principle of doing right? As anarchists, we're against all who lie. Now, the thing is, yes, we recognize then that we are tax slaves, but then we recognize even further that we're not just tax slaves, we're prisoners to the fantasy of the idea that government will set us free. Oh, yeah. Right? And so the only way then that we can free ourselves is to persuade and influence our community that there is an alternative to politics, and that's principles. Right? If we continue to say that, well, uh, we're going to have government, then let's have this kind of government, then you're not going to sway anyone. They're going to think it's like a football team. Well, you're just trying to get me to switch on your side then, right? And that never happens, right? People are kind of loyal to that. Uh, and the only way that people are going to let go, though, is you yourself cast that ring of power into Mount Doom and say, well, I don't seek to rule you, yeah. right? And it's like, well, that's interesting. They've never heard of that before because all their lives they hear government option A or option, option B. Yep. They've never heard of option C. How about none of the above, oh, right? Yeah. So when we look at the facts that there is no factual evidence in history to show that politics has ever set anyone free government or voting as everyone has ever set anyone free, then we kind of have to realize then that we kind of have to let go also of the idea that there is any kind of form of government that leads towards liberty. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, I mean, that was tried once in 1776. You know, people talk about the Libertarian Party and look where we are today, right? One exception in compromising that principle led to this enormous tyrannical state that we have today. Oh, yeah. And now people just don't care enough to... Well, that's what I mean. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, at this point, they don't think they can. Right. I and mean, when you tell people that voting and politics is the way to do it, and that apathy will set in over time, and they realize yeah. it actually doesn't change anything, right? right? It hasn't created this kind of effect. I've been lied to. I over think this over. voting cycle has been an eye opener for a lot of people. Right. Because right. they're seeing that their vote actually doesn't make a change or a difference right. at this point, because their candidates who should be getting the votes are not getting the votes. Right. So I think this is a great moment then for us to present finally option C, anarchy, none of the above. Let's go anti political movements, right? Uh, let's go principles over politics and move forward in a direction that's never been done before in all of history to create an anti political organization, to go do the anti political campaign. Um, and this not be to uh, perpetuate the fraud that politics will set us free, that Trump will set us free, that Sanders or Hillary or any of these guys will set us free. Um, so you're going to be here for a little while in Richmond? Cool, oh, all right. Next Saturday, we have a party, anarchy party. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so come meet a lot of the other handcats, the other anarchists. Uh, come meet a lot of the Richmonders that's going to be here next Saturday. Yeah. I just gave you a flyer. I, I, I got to read my last business card. No, that's but, okay. Um, I'll give you my number afterwards. But um, well, let's do that. No, it's great. Right, do you have friends over here, too, that are anarchists as well? or is this Actually, uh, I'm pretty much yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to wean my family in that direction. Right, good, 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 good. That's how it starts. Interpersonal yeah. relationships, right?